I have to say, A Link Between Worlds really knocked it out of the park with this theme. Instead of reusing A Link to the Past boss theme, which was only used for two bosses in the game, they created a new, unique theme that distinguishes this game from A Link to the Past. The theme itself is good, but there's better ones out there too. The theme of Sweet Revenge. This guy has been a thorn in your side since the start of the game, so getting to finally utterly destroy him with this theme playing in the background is honestly pretty cool. All I'll say is that it could use a bit more intensity throughout the song. Nevertheless, it for sure is one of the better Wind Waker boss themes. Majora's Mask staying tried and true with their very intense themes, and its boss theme is no different. Throughout the theme, it's constantly building itself up, adding more and more instruments until going all out for a few notes. Rinse and repeat. It's nice, but contrasting the Helmorox King theme, I think it could have used a bit less intensity. So it seems the tradition of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Masks placing right next to each other remains. Starting with the first boss theme variant, it's much more catchy and memorable than Majora's Masks and once again bests Majora's Mask by making sure that the theme doesn't get too loud too often. Definitely an improvement over the Majora's Mask theme. Yes, I enjoy the dinosaur theme more than the standard boss theme, which is why it's a shame this theme only gets assigned to two of the bosses in Ocarina of Time. The drums used in this theme really help visualize the fact that you're fighting giant fiery reptiles, and it has a more appealing tune than the first variant in my opinion.
This is probably pretty unpopular, but I think Twilight Princess does the dinosaur theme better. Just the shock and surprise when you realize it's the dinosaur theme honestly puts it up higher for me. Additionally, the tune is much more fast-paced, which I enjoy. I like how having this theme played during Star Lord's boss battle could give us a hint to what the Star Lord could be. Perhaps he was one of the Dodongo, or maybe even Volvagia. Who knows? Legendary theme from Olgera. I understand people getting angry at me for this theme being up this high because it doesn't really sound like a boss theme. But I don't know, something about it just works perfectly with Molgera's battle. It's an unexpected theme to play during such a late boss, but it's a fan favorite, and I tend to agree with the fans on this one. So, I'm including all of the puppet Ganon themes because they're all done very well. Starting with phase 1, the puppet phase. The best aspect of this theme is that the tempo of the music syncs perfectly with the movements of puppet Ganon, which really shows how much effort was put into this theme. It just could use a bit more pizzazz. spider phase of the puppet cannon boss battle. This phase ups the ante, becoming much more intense, which fits because now you face the threat of being crushed by a giant pig spider. It also does a pretty decent job of syncing with spider Ganon's falls and movements. One of the top boss themes in my opinion. If there was any time to use an organ during a Zelda boss theme, using it during a fight with an evil yeti inside of a floating mass of ice is honestly pretty fitting. It's honestly amazing how well the organ fits with the atmosphere of the battle, having a more elegant tone while still managing to sound intimidating. A pretty amazing theme if you ask me.
you could define the phrase big and intimidating with the song, this would be the song for it. The deep sound of the horns really emphasizes just how large and threatening these bosses actually are. At least that's what I would say if the boss battles themselves were actually difficult, especially Morpheal, which is just a joke. But that goes for a lot of Zelda bosses, so I won't hold it against it. It's a great intimidating theme, simple as that. The absolute best Twilight Princess boss theme. The build up is absolutely sublime and the main theme really sounds like a song that would play over a raging fire, which defines Phyrus to a T. Again, it's too bad Phyrus himself may be the easiest boss in Twilight Princess, but yet again I won't hold this against them. This theme is amazing, just simple as that. Final phase of the Puppet Ganon boss battle, the Snake Phase. This battle gameplay wise is absolute hell, which is why I think the sheer amount of intensity in this theme works perfectly. It also yet again does a good job of syncing with Snake Ganon's wild and erratic movements, and his sheer speed, zooming all around the room. Definitely worthy of the top 3 in my opinion.
I'm just gonna say it. I think the Minish Cap has one of the best mini boss and boss themes in the Zelda series. Whereas the mini boss theme felt more like a fight for your life, this theme, like Morpheal and Argorok, does an excellent job of emphasizing the size of your opponents. Which, being able to shrink to the size of a Minish, which are no taller than a grain of rice, fits perfectly. I was honestly considering Princess at number one, but then I remembered the one theme I was missing. Yeah, I'm sure you all knew this would be here. This theme plays during Moldorak and Kaloktos' boss battles, but let's be honest, this theme belongs to Kaloktos. It perfectly encapsulates a truly intense and grueling boss battle, the use of the trumpets making it sound desperate, like a last stand if you will. When you first hear this theme, you probably think it couldn't get any better, but then... This. This is epic. The tempo takes a huge leap forward in speed and all of a sudden the fight just became even more intense than it already was. It feels absolutely gratifying to hear this play while you decimate Kaloktos with his giant blades. Yeah, I don't think this pick needs any more explanation. It's a fan favorite for a reason and it's without a doubt the best Zelda boss theme. Thank you so much for watching both parts of this video if you have. It really shows your dedication to this channel. I think I'll stray away from Zelda for my next video I have planned, so stay tuned for that. You may not know this, but I actually recently made a Twitter account, so follow me there if you want updates on my videos. With all that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks again for watching, and have a good one.